Okay, so we ended our discussion by looking at invention, which means what the subject matter of the speech. The orator should have a universal knowledge, especially knowledge of moral philosophy and knowledge of the law. Knowledge of moral philosophy is indispensable to oratory. Knowledge of moral philosophy is indispensable to oratory. The orator must be a student of human nature. The orator must be a student of human nature. The orator must be a student of human nature. He must then understand the motives for human action. Why people behave the way they behave. Must understand the motives for human action. Why people behave the way they behave. This will enable him to manipulate the audience. Know how to make them laugh, know how to make them cry, know how to move them to action because. The, narrative, the orator understands the, mo the motives of human action, the strength of human action. He must be able to fashion his speech to suit different occasions. He must be able to fashion his speech to suit different occasions. Not all speech events are the same. Not all speech events are the same. Every speech event is different. Every speech event is different. Every speech event is different and hence requires different approaches, different techniques, different tactics. The orator must strive for perfection. That is what the ideal orator is all about. Always trying to be the best. Always attempting to be the best. The orator must strive for perfection. Must strive to be better every day. The orator must strive to have universal knowledge. The, or the orator must have universal knowledge. He must know a bit of everything. You must know a bit of everything. He needs to possess natural gifts. He needs to possess na natural gifts. Like the ability to move the tongue. 
with time has to be able to move fast. We need to move the time. He needs to have the right tone of voice. He needs to have the right tone of voice. He needs to have the right tone of voice. There must be power in his lungs. These are natural gifts. There must be power in his lungs. That will, that will lead to a loud voice and the ability to speak for long. He must have good physique, according to Cicero. The orator must have good physique. In terms of explanation, the person has to be tall and sturdy so that when he stands out, his appearance can command attention. He must be tall and sturdy, according to Cicero, so that when the person stands out, the person can command attention. Sturdy, S-T-U-R-D-Y, sturdy. That when the person stands out, you can command attention. <coughs> now when the person stands out, we are looking to see the person, we can't see the person. And we are saying, where is the speaker? And then finally, we have to bring one table and place the speaker on it. <laughs> it is possible for an orator to still do well without some of these physical qualifications. It is still possible for the orator to still do well without these physical qualifications. They can, that, that, that defect can be ameliorated. Can be ameliorated. That defect can be ameliorated. For instance, um, the lack of loud voice can be amplified with a modern instrument. A high podium can help with the height, if there's a problem with height. And so on and so forth. Cicero emphasizes the preliminary training of the orator. Cicero emphasizes the preliminary training of the orator. The preliminary training of the orator. Cicero emphasizes the preliminary training of the orator. The orator has to be educated, despite the natural, the natural talent. The orator has to be trained because there are many things for him to learn. History, politics. Special knowledge and so on and so forth. This training consists of critically studying the best authors both Greeks and Romans. This training consists of critically studying the best authors, 
both Greeks and Romans. Remember, the orator is versatile. The orator is versatile. He is good in all fields. He has knowledge in all fields. So this training consists of critically studying the best authors, both Greeks and Romans. Another thing, another part of the aspect of the training is speech practices. Speech practices. He has to practice his speech. Speech practices. He has to practice his speech. He has to practice. He has to practice both prepared speech an impromptu speech called extempore. Extempore. You have to practice both prepared speech and extempore. Extempore. You have to practice both prepared speech and Impromptu speech or speech from memory. Speech without preparation. You can just call somebody to come out and give us a five minute speech on a subject matter. Okay? That's when we see whether there will be fire in the mountain or not. Okay? Cicero also recommends physical exercises to keep the body in shape. The orator must do exercises, physical exercises, in order to keep the body in shape, to keep the organs fit, organs like the lungs and the voice. Organs like the lungs and the voice must be kept fit through physical exercises. It is noted that Cicero had this practice, Cicero had this practice of writing out his speeches in full before they were delivered. Cicero had, the, had this practice of writing out his speeches in full before they were delivered. This is, an, this is a part of the preparation for speech making. Then we have the, the disposition. This is the arrangement or the organization of the argument. This is the arrangement or the organization of the argument. The arrangement or the organization of the argument. The arrangement or the organization of the argument. Then we have the issue. Lucretio implies 
and the show implies the mastery of rhetorical devices and figures of speech. For speech presentation, Elocution implies the mastery of rhetorical devices and figures of speech for speech presentation. Lucretia, the mastery of rhetorical devices and figures of speech. We have memoria. 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 This means memory. This means memory. Memoria. This means memory. Memoria means memory. It involves the ability to recall arguments. It involves the ability to recall arguments. It involves the ability to recall arguments. So the, the, the orator has to have good memory to remember arguments. Then we also have pronunciation. Pronunciation. So uh, pronunciation implies the crafting and delivery of speeches. 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 It can also be called action. That's what we call action. That's what we call action. In action, the speaker is expected to use hand gestures. The speaker is expected to use hand gestures. Hand gestures. As when delivering the speech, you need to demonstrate. Right? When delivering the speech, the speaker has to demonstrate. And just the speaker has to use voice variation. Voice variation, you cannot speak at the same level of voice or tune throughout your speech. Sometimes your voice has to go high, sometimes it has to go low. Sometimes your voice has to be high, sometimes it has to be low. So you have to have voice variation. Right. While making the speech, you also make eye contact. While making the speech, you also do what? Make eye contact. It's important to maintain eye contact with the audience while making the speech. Mm -hmm. 
So for those who fear faces, for those who fear faces, that's first fear face, right? You can avoid the eyes and focus on the forehead, right? For those who fear faces, that's when first fear face. Right? You can choose to focus on the forehead rather than the eyes. Okay? So there has to be some form of contact. So it is stated that the, speak, the person speaking, the orator should speak with sufficient clearness. The orator should speak with sufficient clearness. The orator should speak with sufficient clearness. You should be smart. All right, so should be smart. And should be able to address people in any subject matter. The main task of an orator is to get to speak in a proper way to persuade the audience. The main task of the orator is to speak in a proper way to persuade the audience. Above all, the orator should be mindful of his appearance on any speech occasion. So if you have a speech to present, then you might need to do makeover. I give it a special occasion, I need to get a dress for it. I need to go to visit the beautician, the makeup artist, the, the salon, and then you have to dress for the occasion. Above all, preparation Preparation is key to effective speech making. And in all that we do, we are aiming to be like Cicero, like the ideal orator. Of course, we have some good orators that we can model after today. Most politicians are good orators, but I like Obama.
so you can model after him. Um, Mandela was a very good orator. Nelson Mandela was a very good orator. Martin Luther King Jr. was a very good orator. Martin Luther King Jr. was a very good orator. Luther King Jr. was a very good orator. You can listen to his speeches. Usually, I have a dream that I have a dream speech, right? Mahatma Gandhi was a very good orator. Mahatma Gandhi was a very good orator. So the most important thing about speech making is to listen to the best. To listen to the best. Always listen to the best. Okay, so that would be all for on the ideal orator. We now move on to we now move on to